What's up guys, welcome to the Combat Athlete Physio YouTube channel where we take the human movement science and we bring it to the combat sports. In one of the most recent episodes of UFC BJJ's Road to the Title, Isaac Doderlein got hit with a nasty arm bar which resulted in an elbow dislocation. And as a physical therapist, treating injuries like this is literally what I do for a living. So now we're going to look at a clip and relate it to some of the underlying anatomy and biomechanics and then kind of transition into talking about what rehab looks like for Isaac. So we're going to start this clip here with Carlos already having the arm bar locked in. Okay, so we know that Isaac's not going to give up. He's an absolute killer. But most people don't need to know much about the anatomy of the elbow to understand that this is not the way that it's supposed to bend. Okay, so we're going to kind of move through this as they fight and talk about kind of that hyperextension angle. And again, we're going to talk about the anatomy here in a second. But I want to talk about this first so that you have something to relate the anatomy to. Okay, so notice that really hyperextended position. And then the main thing I want to pull from this is what's happening right there when his elbow kind of starts to shake or excuse me, when his fist starts to shake. So pay attention to the fist and then pay attention to Carlos's face afterwards. So right here, he's pushing up and of course we've got the fulcrum of his knee or really his, his kind of anterior thighs, like using his quads as the fulcrum here, right on the elbow and he's trying to hyperextend the elbow. And as it starts to shake, that's really where it starts to give away. And then you can tell that Isaac, or excuse me, that Carlos is like, holy shit, right? And then when it comes back, you can you can see how kind of swinging it around like Gumby, okay? So elbow dislocation, what's happening? All right, so here's some of the bony anatomy of the elbow. We'll back up and orient ourselves. So this is just a right arm with the palm facing up. I've included the scapula here. So let's zoom in. When we talk about the elbow joint, we're talking about the really the articulation between the joint surfaces of the, the humerus and the ulna. Okay, it's called the humeral ulna joint. You can see the ulna kind of wraps around and provides that structure for flexion and extension to occur. Now, the radius is over here, but the main joint is part of the elbow complex for sure. But the main joint is the humeral ulna joint. And I want you to watch it in action. Okay, so this, this, when I say that the structure allows for flexion and extension, or the bending and straightening of the elbow, this is what I'm talking about. And you can see how the ulna kind of sits within this groove of the humerus. So the ulna is here, and the humerus is here. And so that's what we, whenever we have it, I'll let it straighten all the way back out, and then I'll pause it. So whenever it goes too far, it's easy to see how the humerus, if it moved upward, could kind of come out of this, this groove where it's situated in the ulna. All right, so let's go back and we'll talk about what happens whenever this is occurring. So the main structure that I want to talk about first is the articular capsule at the elbow. Okay, so this articular capsule is really thin, um, but it's, it's this kind of fibrous tissue that allows for some stability and allows for the shoulder. It's, uh, it holds kind of like synovial, uh, synovial fluid and it allows the joint to stay lubricated and help it move. So we can tell that if it were to extend or if it were to hyperextend and that humerus were to start to come out and put pressure on the anterior portion of this capsule, we could see how it would probably tear or at the very least stretch. And he, it was a full dislocation, so who knows how much tearing or stretching that happened at the articular capsule. But the other one is, thing, is, a, is a structure that you guys have probably already heard of before, especially if you're baseball fans, and that's the ulnar collateral ligament. Okay, so this is, is particularly the anterior bundle. So when I say anterior, I mean towards the front of the body. So if we were to kind of zoom out and this person were facing us with the palms facing forward, it would be on the front of the elbow. So we'll zoom back in and click on it. You can also tell that if this were kind of twisted and cranked into extension like it was in the, the clip we watched, that this has put on a lot of tension. Okay, and probably, if I had to guess, at least tore a little bit. Okay, so hyperextension injuries and uh, dislocation injuries like that that involve hyperextension at the elbow usually come with concomitant or associated with uh, capsule and ligament injuries. Okay, and that's one of the things I want to talk about here because most of the time when people talk about there was an article, BJJ Doc, I think, wrote the article, and Doderlein was quoted in that article saying something to the effect of, you know, I, I'm happy, fortunately, this was a uh, not a fracture, it was just a dislocation, kind of 
uh, downplaying the fact that it was a dislocation and was happy that it wasn't a fracture. Uh, this is this is kind of a myth that's not talked about a lot. It's not kind of a myth. It is a myth that's talked about a lot. It's just a misunderstanding of the properties of tissue healing. Doderlein would have been almost certainly better off if he were to have had a fracture instead of this almost certain ligament injury. So this is just a graph showing the rate of healing for different tissues in the body. So let's go all the way down and look at the bone first. So we can see that it kind of runs from three to four weeks all the way to two to three months. And this is pretty consistent with what we see in practice. Yeah, if you have, of course this is depending on the fracture, but if let's say he had sustained kind of a small fracture in the humerus or in the ulna, probably would have immobilized him for anywhere from six to eight weeks and then he would have started rehab. And then it takes a couple months after that to get back to where you can uh, uh, start to do some return to sport type things. Now, with ligaments, it's totally different. Ligaments are very poorly vascularized compared to bone and definitely compared to muscle. So if you have anywhere from a grade one to a grade two, God forbid a grade three, and he, he almost certainly had anywhere from a grade two to a grade three uh, on the, the, especially the anterior capsule that we just went over and then the UCL. Because we know that with that hyperextension injury, at least the, the anterior portion of that capsule in the UCL or the, the anterior bundle of the UCL are definitely put on a massive amount of stretching in order for that capsule to loosen up enough for the surfaces of those bones to completely separate. Okay, so if we're looking at a grade two or even a grade three, we can see that the, the tissue healing injury times exceed what a bone typically does. And that's just to heal the tissue. That's not managing any symptoms or managing any loss of range of motion that have happened during times of immobilization or low levels of movement. Uh, and not to mention any of the strength loss that you've had or the atrophy that you've had. So keep that in mind next time you hear somebody say, well, thankfully it was a, it was just a dislocation, not a break. That A lot of times that turns out not to be true. Now, I hope he has a really good recovery, but I think he's underestimating the gravity of having some of these anterior structures uh, be either torn or pulled to the point where they have just an amount of laxity that won't provide a lot of stability in that elbow, as opposed to having maybe a fracture up here or maybe even in the ulna here, but that this joint stayed intact. We're probably looking six to eight weeks of mobilization and then a couple of months back into return to sport. So I hope he has a really good recovery, but whenever he said that, I was just like, I got to make a video on this because I, I want people to understand that just because you didn't break something doesn't mean it's still going to be less time for you to return to your sport. Okay. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.